Schmoes Know presents Horror Flicks, a podcast covering all things horror, suspense, and psychological thrillers in the world of cinema. And now, here are your hosts, Cobster and Cody. What is going on, horror fans? What's Welcome up? back. What up, what up, what up? What up, what up? What up? What up, what up? What up? Welcome back to another episode of Horror Flicks, the show where we talk about horror movies. Yeah. Horror movies. And if there's time for some horrors, we'll talk about we'll those We'll talk ones about too. those too. No we'll big do deal. Scream Queens because they're a bunch of filthy whores. Just kidding. Okay. <laughs> anyway, this got off on a very, very, very misogynistic level. Yes. Hey, <laughs> hey, how you doing, buddy? I'm doing great. T- tell them who you are. I'm first Cody. Of all. You're Cody. I'm that's Cody. right. That's right. Okay. I was, you're, 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 who are you? Uh, I'm Steve. Steve. No, I'm just nice kidding. to meet you. Actually, okay. you know, I my name's Copster. Okay. Uh, and it's not legally, but you know, whatever. We'll figure it out. You gotta find uh, a way to change that. I actually, it's gotta I, be a process. I remember a lot of the time when I was a when I was a young when I was a young lad. I uh, would tell people my name was Steve, and they'd believe me. Really? And, yeah, I convinced them that way. I used to tell people I don't like the name like, Cody, so like, oh. I would try to just every day I'd try a new name. Oh yeah, well who yeah. likes the name Cody? Nobody. Nobody does. Nobody does. Especially my girlfriend. Off. That's about it. But, yeah. She doesn't even like. She yeah. told me. She's, she's just, like, just, I, I really pretty, don't. She's like, like you know, he's he's nice and all. He's he's cool. He's but a great guy. But he's kind of Cody. Have, yeah, he's got a weak uh, name. You know, I need like a, a Gunther a or a Skyler or or like a Hunter. Yeah, Hunter. You know, something that'll just. Fuck me right. You know what I mean? <laughs> <laughs> I'm just kidding. Okay. All right. Anyways, uh, up to a good what? Uh, yeah, so welcome back, guys. This is our Q&A episode where basically Woo. it's just going to be all your guys' questions that you sent to us, you know, about our personal lives and how much I really don't like Cody and how mm-hmm. much he just, uh, like, just praises me all the time. Yep. You guys will find out about all that stuff. Yep. But uh, before we get Asshole. into that, yeah, you're welcome, uh, Octopus. And so Fuck what you. we're going to do for, for first of all, we're, we'll talk about some of the new stuff. Just it's mainly trailers and kind of stuff that we've seen over the past few weeks just kind of catching up on some shit mm-hmm. um so first of all uh i've seen a few movies uh, two. Oh, have you yes i have you've seen a horror movie now i saw i finally watched, started horror flicks yeah i finally watched I'm some so horror proud movies of you. What look did you dude see? i've been living under a fucking book it's all right when during finals mm-hmm. so i haven't had time to do stuff mm-hmm. finally got to uh first one i saw area 51 finally which <laughs> was both really anticipated on our part yeah we were looking forward to this just because it's been you know 35 years since this it's movie was announced. When did, when did uh, Paranormal Activity come out? That came out in 2009. Who we kind of announced been, right when that came out. Yeah, yeah, we were waiting for this. Orrin Pelly's Area 51, and the trailer came out sometime this year, and we were all really shocked. And I was even shocked that it was on VOD, so I was like, yeah. oh, okay, I'll, I'll check it out on PSN. And I watched it, and don't watch it. Okay, Don't Thank watch you. it. You don't need to. Okay. If this was, ma- if, if this was made... You know, back right when Paranormal Activity came out, or rather, if this came out around the same time, maybe it could have been. It's just the, the typical tropes really? of a found footage movie. Yeah. Nothing really too exciting. There's some cool stuff when they actually get inside Area 51. Other than that, yeah, yeah, that's just no tension. It's Damn. not scary. Nothing at all. Nothing what I expected it to be, and I was really disappointed by it. I wonder what he'll do now. Yeah, I, I'm just, I'm really, and we'll t- we're gonna get into this when we talk about some of the trailers. Mm. I just. I'm finally getting over the whole found footage. Finally. Really? Yeah, I'm just getting really sick of it. Wow. I really am. As much as I love this genre and I think it could still be utilized, we're just it's we we it's been so many. There's been way too many and you know, I'm all for found footage as long as they're doing something creative and differently, you know? But now it's just all horror movies. It just movies. follows the same formula. Yeah. I mean, it's just got the same uh, opening. It's like the same purposes of why they're filming stuff and the endings just all – it just ends, camera falls to the ground. Like, ah, you know what I mean? Come it's, on, the, the, Orin, stuff. You're it's, better than that. It's just all that shit that I'm sick of. Okay. And so I saw that, and then I finally saw Poltergeist. Um, this one I actually wanted to see just because for yeah. a show. Yeah. But apparently you're telling me not to. Yeah, you don't need to. It's not okay. I, I'll uh, probably see it. I saw it with the bo- the two boss men, the two mm-hmm. schmoes, and uh, they weren't big fans of it either. But it it had me. Re- it really had me like the first twenty minutes. It okay. set it up really well. It's a pretty good slow burn at the very start, and I and I love that in horror films because it, it's it, it sets a good eerie tone. I, you get I guess. to know the characters a yeah. little bit. Okay, yeah, that's, I was, that's a good start. I was digging most of the characters, most of the family members. The the older sister is just. Oh just fucking on her iPhone the whole time. Just very uh-huh. typical. It's literally, if Poltergeist was never made, and this was the first time it was ever made, it's just, it's exactly what you would think of. Just all the same shit in a horror film that they have, just without the scares. Honestly, when this movie started being scary is when it started to fall apart. Really? Yeah. It, it, okay. it doesn't really capture... Are they just, 
like carbon copy scenes from the original? Yes and no. They they and it, I will praise them that they try to do their own things while honoring the original one, but it doesn't resonate really well. You okay. know, like you know, remember the scene. Uh, a lot of you know what it is. A lot of it is rushed. All the all the scenes that were from the original movie that were iconic, like the dude peeling off his face. Mm-hmm. There is a, a slight nod to that one, but it's like literally five seconds of it, and okay. it, it, it's a little bit different. But you, if you're a fan of the original one, you know what they were trying to do. Um, and then it, they also they do that twice actually with with okay. another character, and then. Um, like the ending, you remember? Okay, remember in Poltergeist when she falls in the pool and, and all the mud and the skeleton and stuff? Yeah, it's like ten seconds of CGI and then it's over. Like and and that's it. Oh, really? There's really no tension. And there's no any kind of fear. There. It, what I love about the original Poltergeist is that it's like, you know, it's not that you're honoring the ghosts that are in the house, but it's like you're kind of like in awe of what's going on because at the start they they they're like seeing the chairs being moved around a lot. And it's okay. kind of like exciting to them because they have no idea what this is. So they're kind of having fun with it a little bit. And so that's what I loved it so much. And then it became this real scary thing that they had to deal with. This yeah. one, it just jumps right into it. It just okay. like gets right into the scary, really. It rushes through it. The, character, the characters just are all over the place. Sam Rockwell Poor Sam phones Rockwell. it in. Uh-huh. He really phones it in. And uh, just like it wasn't ha- like I just wasn't happy with it at all. I will okay. say, I will say though, the clown scene was it's great. It was pretty cool. Okay. It was pretty cool up until it I'm jumps forward to it, that. And up until it jumps on him because like, it which was, isn't a spoiler. You saw it in the trailer. It's, it's in the trailer. Yeah. We, but it's funny because it's like I was genuinely laughing out loud. I was like, oh, I was like, oh fuck, okay, yeah, this okay. is pretty cool. Nice. Just because um, it's like you never see the clown running. It's you, you see just it, hear it. You, no, you or, hear it and you see it right when it falls. So it's it's like oh that's kind of cool and it just sits there and you're like oh shit and it, but it's not just one of them it's a couple of them and it oh. does it a few times and then and then obviously when the, you see in the trailer when the ball like well, that's some really good tension and stuff other than that yeah okay. nothing gotcha. else did nothing for me that's disappointing so yeah um, oh, well. it doesn't ruin the original one like I never think remakes ruin the original movie. It's just it, if yeah, anything, it's not, it's not going to erase the original. No, if anything, the original's it, still there. If, if right. anything, it makes the original one look better. It's yeah. just, I would hate to think that the new generation of horror fans watching this are saying like, "This is what the original one was like." Yeah, it's like, no, go uh. to the original one, watch it. I, I like. I would hope that this movie or any remake for that matter discourages horror fans mm-hmm. to not see the original one because it's not usually that great. So, mm-hmm. um, but yeah, that that was my take on it. But uh, all right, well, wow. let's move. Uh, you gotta watch it too, right? You gotta yeah, I'm gonna it. watch it. Yeah, yeah go I'll watch it. it. Tweet, he'll tweet it out or something. I'll tweet like out my reaction. Better than yeah. copsters, react whatever. It's whatever. Already. Fuck you. Uh, James Gunn. Yeah, he's doing the Velcro experiment mm-hmm. has some cast. This guy, he's just saying, you know, F you to all the trades and all the websites. And he's just reporting casting news himself, which is kind of funny. great. Mm-hmm. Uh, basically, there's a lot of people. There's about five main ones. There's Michael Rooker from uh, of course. Uh, Walking if, Dead, uh, what, without Guardians of the Galaxy. You can't have Slither. James Gunn and not yeah. have Michael Rooker. He's going to be in it. John C. McGinley from Scrubs. You know his face. Okay. This guy. Is he the black dude? No, that guy. Black Scrubs? Oh, okay. The yeah. Oh, yeah, yeah. The, guy. Uh, the animal. The, yeah. the dick yeah. cop guy from the animal. Okay, yeah. cool. That guy's good. From the animal, that's what you go to? Yeah. The Rob Schneider movie? Okay, fine. He was the captain in Point Break. Fine. Okay, there we go. Uh, Melanie Diaz, who was in uh, Fruitvale Station. Oh, she's There's the girlfriend. Here. Yeah. Okay. The she's Latina. The Latina. Latina. Go. Don't go. Don't go, Fruitvale. I don't know. She doesn't say that. It's a really sad scene. It's a really bad. It's on <laughs> Netflix now, and I was watching it. I know. It I watched it for the first time last so week. It's really sad. He's like, don't go. Don't go. I was like, don't. Okay, go ahead. Okay. Let Tony think. Goldwyn. Um, I don't know who it is, but I know the face. He's in it, too. And then lastly here in the main one, you got John Gallagher Jr., Who's who that? was in Short Term 12. Did you ever see that? No, but everyone oh, was. Yeah, incredible, I know. Dude. Everyone, oh, everyone guys, yeah. JT is like, go see it. It's like uh, the best JT, movie. Okay, that guy hypes up movies so much. Did you uh, see Mad Max 2 and not, I did. not dig it as much? I liked it. I oh, gave it a okay. solid maybe like 4 out of 5. Yeah, yeah, four, yeah. Okay. 4.1, yeah, maybe, too. maybe too. 4.2. Great action, but it's just... I'm not desiring to go see it again. Okay. This isn't that. Yeah, that isn't anyway. that. Um, so, yeah, those are the casting options. Okay, and James Gunn is just writing this movie, too. He's writing it. The guy who directed Wolf Creek is directing it. I'm so excited for this. It was. Yeah, this is the one where they're all stuck in the mine or something I, like I that, think right? So and they, yeah, they got to like, like kill each other. Yeah, they're all yeah. like stuff. Yeah, I think that's it's like an really isolated cool. thing. Yeah. I think that's really great. I mean, yeah, looking uh, forward to this. I can't remember the name of the director for Wolf Creek. I know he's Australian. I think it's Greg something. And I like, I, yeah, Greg something. I like Australian horror directors. I think they do a really great job. And mm-hmm. obviously James Gunn with it, it seems like I can't see it being too serious of a movie because of his Greg writing. McLean is his name. Yeah, okay, Greg okay. McLean. McLean. Um, I can't see it being too serious of a movie just because of his writing. Um, so it'd be kind of fun if it if it's like a fun kind of horror film. 
Um, if not, if it's, if it, if it is actually serious, then I think, you know, the director can bring some serious shit. Mm -hmm. But speaking of fun horror films, I was going to say, speaking of shit, speaking, yeah, speaking I just of went shit, to the bathroom. speaking of shit, smell my fingers. Sorry. Oh, oh, <laughs> yeah. Okay. like that? Go on. Um, no, speaking of fun, uh, horror movies, uh, there was a trailer for the cooties. I mean, we talked about the poster for this. I didn't uh, realize that's what it was. Cause it was called yeah. something else, uh, last year when it was in development or whatever. And I was like, oh, oh that sounds awesome. And then we saw the poster. I didn't know it was called cooties. Oh, okay. Like, yeah. That's why I wasn't like, oh, but then when I saw the trailer, yeah. I was like, this is like this the coolest movie so ever. So much fun. It's got Lee uh, Winnell, I think. Yeah, from yeah. Uh, the writer and director of Insidious Three and all the Saw, other Saws yeah. and stuff. Mm -hmm. uh, Rain Wilson, Elijah Wood. Mm -hmm. um, who's the oh, the girl that's in the, the stepbrother's girl? Uh, uh, Catherine Hahn. Yeah, yeah, mm -hmm. I think she's in it too. Mm -hmm. I think I saw her in the Maybe. trailer. I can't remember, but it it looks really really fun. It looks so fucking. Funny. It, the, you didn't Ugh. finish the trailer because I didn't, didn't want to because anything. like I was laughing pretty much from when it started. Like, yeah, I saw where it was going and I was like, oh, that's fucking genius. It's, and it, then. Like, with maybe, like, 40 seconds to go, I was like, you know what? I'm sold. I don't need to watch this anymore. That's good. I was laughing my ass off yeah. already. All right. Yeah, yeah. Uh, same here. I think it's it's a good spin on, like, I guess zombies. Yeah, I guess it's mm -hmm. zombies just with kids. And I just love the idea of teachers just fucking having to kill their kids. <laughs> just because you know that's what they're thinking the entire time. Oh, that's yeah, a very absolutely. stressful job. I, uh, maybe I'm telling you. And I didn't think about that. Maybe it's, like, an actual meta thing for yeah. them, you know? That would be kind of funny if it's a little uh. message film. It's like, don't fuck with the teachers or else they're going to kill you. <laughs> Um, I think it looks like a lot of fun. It looks like it very much looks like a Tucker and Dale yeah, versus just, Evil type of thing. Yeah, it's a fun thing. horror. That's yeah. what I'm looking for. And it looks yeah. gruesome as hell. I love Rain Wilson and anything mm -hmm. that he's in. So, yeah, okay. That's I'm the, excited. For I'm this, pretty dude. excited for that as well. Oh. Let us know if you're excited out there mm -hmm. as well. Um, another trailer. I finally saw the Crimson Peak trailer. I, we the second one. Yeah. I haven't watched it. I'm um, still not sold on it. I don't, really? I don't understand. I mean, I'm not the biggest fan of Del Toro, I guess. Like I'll I admit just, he's he's overrated I, kind of, I, but I don't I wouldn't go as far as I mean I haven't seen a bunch of his stuff as well. Okay, I'm just I, I appreciate what he does, but I don't like rush out to see him. Okay. Like I rush out to see a, you know uh, the Fincher Nolan film or something, or something or Nolan something. or something okay. like gotcha. that. Um, I think he's a great director. It's just I, there's something about this movie, and I hope it's just a case of like weak trailers and great movie, mm -hmm. but. I'm just not really into what I see. Like, okay. I just don't like the the special effects that are being used in it. It because he's such a practical um, guy when it comes to movies, and That's there's true. Just, a lot of the shots that. just look like hokey ghost kind of things. And I just I really? don't I don't dig it. Mm -hmm. um, I do like the idea. It seems like it's like. They're discovering ghosts for the first time. I think that's a really interesting concept because they don't really have anything to base it off of, and they yeah. just kind of have to guess it. But, um, yeah, it just seems like a very weird kind of story. But I, I, I'm going to definitely check it out. It's yeah. just I'm not 100% excited about it. I'll give it this. It looks completely different Yeah, yeah, absolutely. Than the, every found footage movie that comes out. You know what I mean? Like in every jump scare movie, it's something completely different. Yeah, and that's true. I, I love that genre. Isn't this kind of sad, though, how like tainted we are as horror fans? Like, yeah, we, but like, like anything that we see, we're going to criticize the shit out of it yeah. just because it's like uh, it's not perfect. And I and I get it. I'll give this credit. Look, Guillermo del Toro is probably a top five, top ten most prolific directors working. Today. Yeah, exactly. For he's out people, there. Yeah. And he's out there doing a horror movie. Mm -hmm. I want Nolan or Spielberg yeah. or Fincher, someone to go back to just a horror movie. Yeah. You know, and just well, try Fincher, to take it Fincher has dived deep. I mean, because he, he was like seven. You know a little bit seven, okay. and even Girl with the Dragon Tattoo a little bit too. There's some elements of horror it, it in that. Kind of, yeah. It, the... And well, obviously Alien Three, but I mean that mm -hmm. doesn't really, really count. Mm -hmm. Um, yeah, I, I understand too. I want to see more directors. I'm just gonna go out and support a big director doing yeah. a small. You know, let's do it. Let's save this conversation because I think we can have a really good conversation okay. of directors that haven't done horror films that I, that would be perfect oh, for that's them. A good episode. I think right I think there. we should do that next week. Okay. That'd be okay, really we'll cool. Okay. We'll do a lot of research for that, and you guys can have fun with that. So cool. we'll we'll leave that at for now. Right. Um, and then the final trailer we're gonna talk about is the Gallows. Mm -hmm. uh, I wasn't a fan of this one either. The same thing, just with the found footage. Just I'm yeah. over it. I'm cautiously optimistic. Yeah. Um, I, it looks like. It gets really ridiculous at times in this trailer. Mm -hmm. um, maybe it could be a guilt or pleasure type thing for me. I don't maybe. know. Maybe. Uh, but I, the weird thing is the first teaser that came out, did you see that? I don't know. Like a couple months ago? I remember it's, we it's talked basically about just, it. You know the scene in the trailer at this at the end when the girl's sitting there in like the red room and, and the guy's the right behind the her? Yeah. It's pretty much that. Mm. But it's the way the trailer's edited is like super cool. I love oh, it. Oh, okay. Guarantee that's the last shot of the movie. Yeah, probably. I no, guarantee I think it. About it. Yeah. Oh, shit. Anyway. Um, but this... I don't know. It just didn't really do it for me. It seemed like completely different from that original teaser. Yeah. I don't know. I mean, I, 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 it's interesting that they're going into the, 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 the theater to try to figure to, mm -hmm. I don't know. It seems like very much, uh, what's the TV show on Nickelodeon that was a real, not real scary. Are you afraid of the dark? Are you afraid of the dark? Mm -hmm. It seems like an episode of that. And then they just kind of get in that kind of situation. Okay. But just, 
I don't know. It's very it seems very typical. Like yeah. where are they gonna is it am I gonna really believe they're gonna They're all go, probably gonna die at the end, the camera's yeah. gonna fall to the ground. Well, am I gonna believe that they're holding this camera the whole time just because they wanna capture the moment? Like that's just so boring now. Mm-hmm. I, I I don't I don't get excited for that anymore. Never give me, stop recording no, no matter what, right? Give me bro? give me reasons why, you know. Yeah. I wanna see a found footage movie that jumps in and out from a real movie to found footage and just utilizes it that way and not yeah. just be the whole movie found footage. I just mm-hmm. get creative with it. But anyways, that was that. Um, I, I don't think there's too much else news. I'm sure there is, but we'll, we'll talk about it eventually. Mm-hmm. Um, just those, those trailers were the ones that were the big things that came out, mm-hmm. and I just couldn't get too excited for most of them, except for Cooties. You know? Yeah, Cooties was great. I think just most horror films that I'm going to be excited for from now on, unless it, the trailer really kind of freaks me out is just fun campy horror films mm-hmm. that just that take the genre and have a lot of fun with it because right at least it, it's kind of a safe way but at least it's it's doing something fun with it and not trying to be scary that turns out to be complete mm-hmm. shit well said sir smell my fingers nah. okay let's get into your guys's q and a's your, your, your questions episode. That was, uh, that was actually from pretty Jam good. That right was there. like, uh, yeah, I was going to say. Okay. <laughs> Come on, motherfucker. <laughs> yeah, I'm Suck so the bush. sorry to everyone listening. All right. Okay. Speaking of sucking balls, our first question. I'm just kidding. No, she's like, <laughs> wow. I don't know why. <laughs> I don't know why. Anyways. Yeah, uh, let's go. Our first question. <laughs> I don't know why I said that. And I. <laughs> Cody's dead on the floor. Oh, my God. Okay, There's sorry. an octopus right behind Go him. on. Shut up. All right. All right. First question is going to be from Albert Glowacki. Albert. Albert Glowacki. Um, he says, hey, guys, I'm a huge fan. And this is from the uh, email, by the way. Okay. Uh, I'm a huge fan. You guys are awesome. Thank you, sir. You are awesome. My question is about the woman in black. Did you hate it like everyone else? I don't understand all the hate. I thought it was genuinely creepy. Um, I'm in the same boat. I, 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 I liked it a lot. Mm-hmm. Um, it's been a while since I've seen it. It's a pretty... Uh, it's got that goth sort of horror. Mm-hmm. There is a really great moment in the movie where it's 20 minutes of pure silence. Yeah. I love that. Yeah. Just like kind of pure dread, not knowing what to expect, and not mm-hmm. really much happens. Um, uh, I think women in, in like old women that are dressed in black kind of with, with like the bridal thing mm-hmm. in, in front of them, that freaks me out. And Were I, you freaked out by Mama? That's a I never or, saw it. You never saw Mama? No, I never okay. saw it. It's not great, but anyway, go on. No, but yeah, uh, I I do I do think Women in Black is a pretty. Yeah, it's film. it's um, yeah, I respect it. Mm-hmm. You know, the sequel is dog shit. I'm sure. I've I've seen bits and pieces of yeah. it, but it's very bad um, from what I've seen. But the first one, um, it just, I just respect it for being different than everything else, yeah. and it's actually scary. I wasn't a fan of how it ended. I like the way it ended. You did, yeah, really? I did, okay. I did. You know, I'm I, not going to spoil it. It's it's, seen a, it, it's a tragedy. It yeah. is. It's okay. really sad, but. Um, it closes it, and it's like, and it it's like a good opportunity for not to make a sequel, but then they made a sequel, so okay. I don't know, whatever. All right, whatever. Uh, and I thought the acting was great. I mean, Daniel Radcliffe. I'd like to see him. He likes doing horror movies. Yeah, you know, he did. I like that too. guy, man. He makes interesting. Uh, he does. He picks a lot of interesting yeah. stuff. He doesn't do what he didn't um, fall into like the cliche like. You know, he didn't do it. Kid actor. He didn't do path. what Ron did from Harry Potter. And just Way not, to go, Ron. Not do anything. What are you doing, Weasley? I don't know. You got to hook up with Hermione, and that's it. <laughs> that's a win for everybody, though. All right, let's go to the next question. From- Stacy Howard says, Oh, Stacy. Stacy said, Stacey's mom has got it going on. got it going on. All I want, and I waited so long. Waited. Stacy, can't you see? You're just not the girl for me. I, I know, know it I'm might be wrong, wrong, but I'm in love with Stacy's mom. Every time. Stacey's involved in the show. We have to sing that. Song. Yeah, let's okay. sing it. That was pretty good. She says, "My question for next week's podcast: There are several examples of horror movies where the plot revolves around a certain phobia. Example: Fear of the Dark, <laughs> Darkness Falls. Fear of Clowns, It. Fear of Sharks, Jaws. Fear of Falling Asleep, Nightmare on Elm Street. What yeah, would because be- when I fall asleep, I think of a guy with freaking." What, okay, go ahead. what would be your dream horror movie about your biggest phobia? Oh, we know mine is. Oh yeah. Uh, what is the plot? Who would star in it? Who would direct Ooh, it? It's good. Here we go. Great job on getting ten episodes. That's mm-hmm. exciting. Hugs and kisses to Cody, to Cody, to Kobe, to Cot, to fucking Ringo. I tried putting our names in there, but it didn't work. <laughs> Good job, man. Yeah. Thank so you what, for the question, Stacy. What's your phobia, Stacey. Okay. Well, yeah, we know yours. Uh, okay, I'm, I'm gonna tear yours up because everyone made fun of mine. Well, on the, on the I, there's show been year. plenty of fucking movies that have already been like this. Uh, okay. Because my fear, my biggest fear, is spiders. Ah, okay. I fucking That's hate original. spiders. I hate spiders to 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 the core. Mm-hmm. I I I don't wish any harm on on too many human beings or living things on the face of the planet. But if tomorrow someone said if you push this button and all 
uh, spiders will be obliterated in the most painful way and they would feel it and they would be in agonizing pain, I would push that button in a heartbeat because I would rather be dead than have a spider even think about touching me. Really? I hate spiders. I legit, there's nothing. I'm I'm gonna have a good prank for you. There's nothing that chokes me up more so or gives me more anxiety than a spider, dude. I, I, I'm getting fucking chills really i I really don't like spiders at all and for me that movie was arachnophobia it was one of the biggest reasons why that that, uh i'm afraid of spiders you ever see arachnophobia with jeff daniels of course um it's not eight-legged freaks that didn't do it for you i love eight-legged freaks it's it's pretty funny and it creeps me out seeing those big-ass spiders like that Uh, you know what it is too it's not like big spiders like that don't really scare me too much it's the little ones it's like it's like an army of little ones i get you yeah they got eight legs like what the fuck is wrong with them I don't. I don't like it. But um, if I were to, let's see. Okay, biggest fear: spiders. Okay, so that's one. The plot. Yeah, um, make a plot for your movie with spiders. And then who would star in it and who would direct in it? Okay. Um. So the plot is, it is. Okay. Young little boy. I'm excited for this. Young little boy, home alone. Okay. Parents are out partying okay. and drinking as per usual. Okay. And uh, he has no babysitter. He's by himself. He's ten years old. They okay. they trust him. Okay. And so he starts watching movies and stuff, but then he hears something, like, uh. on the roof. Okay. He's like, what the fuck is that? What is that? <laughs> what is He's that? Like, is that Mark Wahlberg? He turns off his he turns off his Barney. He's like, what is that? And then he 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 goes to investigate, and there's like a billion spiders in the in, mm. the, in the roof, Mm-mm. and it's and it's played by the kid, um, who was in Looper. Oh, okay. I don't <laughs> that, know. That, was a, that movie ended very quickly. Yeah, I was about to say, I was and really then, intrigued. And then the, the billions of spiders, they talk to each other, and, mm-hmm. and they be, turn out to be aliens, and um, they, 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 they go inside his body, they control his body, and then when the parents come home, um, he kills his parents, and then the spiders Jesus leave. Jesus Christ. The spiders leave, and then they put him in jail forever, and, he, and he's like, it, it was the spiders! It was the spiders! Was, and then it's going to be Gary Busey, um, okay. like 50 years later. I was going to cast Gary it Busey was, in mind, damn it. It was, it was the... Uh, uh, it was the spiders. I can't do it. Okay. And then, and then, um, then the main character becomes, uh, oddly enough, Joseph Gordon Levitt, mm. and um, he he comes to investigate. He's like, "Hey, hey, there's spiders in my head. What do I do?" And then Gary Busey's like, "You gotta kill yourself." And then he kills himself, and then he becomes a spider. Wow. And then he takes over the world. That's uh, my movie. And who uh, would direct that movie? That uh, Stacy, you want to know who wanted who would be directing who that would movie? Be directing that movie, copter. That'd be the one and only. Um. <laughs> oh, that guy. Uh, okay. Ubi Bowl. Ubi Bowl. Oh, Jesus yeah. Christ. Okay. Mine's obviously Octopus. Yeah. Um, Is there any movies that scare you that from Octopus? No. I mean, people say, like, oh, the Kraken. That's not really an octopus. That it's doesn't count. Yeah, it's just a big thing. old monster. Um, Here's my movie, okay? Mm-hmm. Here's this guy. He works construction. He's afraid of flying, so he has to take a ship to – Oh, okay. He's, he has a job in Hawaii, so he's on his way back from Hawaii to the mm-hmm. coast in California. Okay. And he's on a boat with this really weird guy, weird old guy who's telling ghost Matthew stories. McConaughey. Matthew McConaughey. He's telling okay. ghost stories, you know, saying, hey, these waters are troubled. And he's like, whatever. I just want to get home to my kids. All of a sudden, a bump oh, against uh-oh. the uh, the ship. Oh, They're yeah. like, what the hell was that? Iceberg? Straight ahead? I don't know. Uh-oh. We don't know yet. It's dark. It's night. It's yeah. raining. It's, oh, it it's is raining. It's cold. And, you know, he looks out to the ocean. He sees a, uh, a shark fin. <gasps> okay. They're like, oh, it's just a shark. We're okay. We're safe in this boat. All of a sudden, the boat goes bumping again. Uh-oh. It's not the shark. It's 20 feet out there. Okay. <laughs> what the hell is going on here? Yeah. All of a sudden, you look out to the shark. A big old tentacle comes down and kills the shark. <laughs> and then he's like, oh, my God. Something just killed the shark. And all of a sudden, you see these tentacles come up around just like Kraken and Pirates of the Caribbean, oh, yeah. too. It's like attacking this squid. Uh, it's not a giant squid. It's a giant octopus. And its head's fucking huge. Yeah. It's going around. It's, it's wrestling the ship going down. It's like the In the Heart of the Sea trailer. Yeah. That's what it is. And then it goes down, and the guy has to literally punch the octopus yeah. underneath the water with its stupid and then, big head. And then, and then Matthew McConaughey has has a big triton. Yeah. And then, just yeah. like the scene from Rain of Fire, where he jumps off oh. into the dragon. <laughs> he jumps off into he's the off octopus. He's off like the uh, the sail on yeah. top of the ship, and he he's jumps like, off. He's like, he's like smile, ah. you son of a bitch! And he jumps in the air and he smashes it and kills it. <sighs> yeah. Directed by Wes Craven. Because he has to do an octopus movie. Okay. He's got to right. do it. Okay. okay. I take it. I like that's, that. That's going to be him that's, getting back on the map. That's why you're a writer and I'm a director. Here that's we perfect. go. And Next that's, question. And that's, thank, thank you, Stacy. That was yeah. a lot of fun. Uh, hey, guys. This is another one from our email. It says, this is from, um, his name is not Ebola. It's Abiola. Abiola. Might be Abby. Abiola mm-hmm. Talibi. His name, uh, he, he says Abby for short. If that's a girl. Oh, so yeah. Is this a guy or a girl? girl? 
I've seen I, you. I, you, Abby. He says, "Hey guys, it's Abby from London." Hello. Hello. Really love the show and well done for getting the ten, uh, episode ten. Thank you very much. He says, Thanks. "I have two questions for you. The Q and A next week. Let's go. We'll do one and then we'll do two. Have you guys ever seen the film Thirteen Ghosts? I remember seeing that as a kid and it scared the shit out of me. Still kind of freaks me out to this day. I love Thirteen Ghosts. Yeah, I think it's I a good. Seen I think it in a while. A, I don't think it's, it's fun. a good movie. Great movie." Um, it's a fun, it's a fun guilty pleasure kind of yeah, thing. Yeah, right there with you. I think it's interesting too. I, I love the different type of ghosts that there mm-hmm. are. The 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 jackal and uh, oh, what are the other ones? Did the jackal think the one with the head, the head in the box? And she yeah. just scratches everyone yeah, yeah, up. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And then mm-hmm. like Shannon Elizabeth boobs are all <laughs> scratched up. No, I, I, I think it's Elizabeth I think it's pretty anyway. entertaining. And yeah, yeah it it kind of creeped me out when I was younger too. Okay. And it's, uh, the second question is. One of the things I love most about the Saw franchise is that we get to catch up with some of the survivors of the traps and how it affects their lives afterwards. Are there any survivors of horror movies that would you that you would like to see what they are up to now? Mine is Jessica Biel and Texas Chainsaw Massacre. Thanks and good luck with the show, Abby. Um, that's a great question. Question. Um, Do you want to know where characters are now? Yeah. So, like, say a movie one that uh, survived. Yeah, someone that survived. Where would you like to see them now? Okay. Um, that's a good one. Uh, I definitely, I mean, we, we've seen like Cindy Campbell over and over mm-hmm. again. Um, I actually would like to see the, the black camera guy from scream Two. I want to see where the hell that guy <laughs> went because he was there. Got a he good was kind of a going. red, red herring. You know, I want to see where his story story what was all about. Okay. Um, survivors and horror family movie. from the conjuring, like to see, make sure they're doing. Okay. Yeah, that'd be cool. I mean, there's going to be a conjuring too. Maybe we, oh, they, that's can, right. they can go yeah. back and follow up with them. That's right. I forgot. About um, that. see that the only problem with that is that a lot of the times, um, in horror movies, the main characters will either die mm-hmm. or if there is a sequel, you do find out what's up with them and they'll die off again. I want to know how the girl from paranormal activity Two, the, the teenage daughter who survived, how she, she's doing. She, I know she's in yeah, uh, she the Mark ones. Yeah. I know, but like, I don't know. You know, I want to see her in an actual movie, like as the star of it, where the ghosts come back. Yeah, maybe her. she'll know. be in the in the fifth one, the, <laughs> the ghost dimension. God, I can't maybe wait to that'd be a good that. one, though. Yeah, I'd like to see that. I don't um, know. This is off the top of my head. Well, um, oh, okay. The uh, the 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 only survivor in Wolf Creek. I'd never saw. Oh, Wolf, I never saw Wolf Creek too. What was that? That, that, was, your that was your phone. Oops, sorry. Um, when are we drinking? Someone asked me. I'm oh, already okay. drinking. Um, you're talking about the. Never mind, I'm not the the main not. character, the 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 dude mm-hmm. from yeah. Wolf Creek. Uh, I would like to see what happened to him because that story afterward would be very very interesting. Mm-hmm. It really would be. Um, and, oh, uh, one. another one. Um, Danny and and um and his oh, mom. Oh, Shining. Shining. Yeah, it's yeah. A great one. I know that Stephen King wrote a sequel to that book, but yeah. I mean that's a whole fucking process to get through as well. Oh. Huh. I think that would be really interesting. Yeah, good one. Um, that that that's a really great question. If we think of some more afterwards. That too seems like could be a really fun Guys, show. You are to giving do. us some thank some you. Show ideas. You're, you're working great. for us. Oh, I, I this love is this. That, I think that would be a really fun show of uh, just coming up with stories, or maybe come up with stories of people that survived mm-hmm. uh, a horror film or something like that. All so right. thank Fair you, enough. Abby. I really appreciate that. Let's go on to the next All one. All right, Tyler says, I was hoping to ask you guys what you think about the future of horror movies. What do you think the new trend will be? For example, Universal Monsters reigned the 30s. Slasher films ruled the 80s, and it seems like our most recent trend has been either mm-hmm. exorcism or found footage. Obviously, trends and tastes change frequently, so where could the genre go from here? Or maybe talk about some of the tropes or con- concepts from this generation and how they can be fixed with upcoming generations of horror films. Keep up the great work, guys. Love the podcast. Yeah. Tyler one key as he wanky. pronounces some people oh, yeah I, I'm, I'm so glad that some of them wanky. have been thank like you. telling us how to pronounce these names because so it like would have been a travesty yeah uh thank you tyler for the question um yeah, yeah. exorcism movies need to go away they they're, do they're way too much every it's single exorc- horror movie it seems like now is going that way it's, it's, and demons it's sort of dying away a little bit we haven't i mean what was last it was last year devil's do was yeah. the recent one mm-hmm. um but it definitely is exorcism movies and found footage well insidious three yeah, but yeah, but it, that's I guess true. maybe yeah. what I'm talking about is just like possession, like where possession something stories. not necessarily exorcism, just like possession stories. Possession that's movies, what I'm getting yeah. sick of. Yeah, um, I'm get yeah, I'm getting tired of that too. I still think there there's some cool ideas they can they can like like the uh, a great example of a of a possession movie slash found footage movie is the taking of Deborah Logan, mm-hmm. and um, I thought that movie was generally really really creepy. Did a really good job of it, but found footage is definitely the new trend that needs to die. But as far as what would come That's after tough. that. I can't. Honestly, the whole Skype thing, it's it's a subversion of found mm-hmm. footage because it's not necessarily found footage. I mean – I, I think that's that's going to be the new thing that a lot of uh, studios are going to be. How kind Unfriended of, was successful. Yeah, and the Den was also really cool. I think they were going. I think studios will bank off of that type yeah. of type of genre. 
Um, I would I like mean, to see a return to form to the slasher thing, kind yeah, of. Yeah, I would Just, love to I want, see. I want more, like, realistic horror. If, if we're going to be doing rehashing stuff from the past, we might as well kind of just – Go into that slasher because we haven't really got a good slasher movie in in years. Oh, I, wow, mean, yeah. I mean, Saw was technically one of the last ones. Yeah. You already have that, like the you, you know, where you have Nightmare on Elm Street and Freddy's the face of that. Halloween, mm-hmm. Michael Myers is the face of that. Saw, Jigsaw is the face of that as well. Yeah. And so really, that's we true. There aren't really of, any iconic like, no. horror. I mean, I think they tried. I think they tried with the collector and the collection trying to get that guy in the face yeah. of it, but that didn't really work out too well. Um, but I would love to see slashers make a return. Um, I'd also like to see horror comedy kind of take over more, you know? Yeah. Because there's a, a lot of the really great horror films that are coming out now are indie comedy horror films. Mm-hmm. And it's just directors having a lot of fun with the genre. The directors that understand the genre and that can play off of that. I mean, obviously, Cabin in the Woods is a perfect example of movies I would love to see even more. Still can be creepy at times, but have really dark humor. Mm-hmm. Uh, that was a great question, Tyler. Thank, Thank you. you. This one comes from Gabriel Arellano. Arellano. <clears throat> hey, guys. Congratulations on your instantaneous success on the podcast. Well, I wouldn't no. say hey, instantaneous, no. <laughs> but thank you very much. Uh, my question for you is that if anyone has, hasn't asked it yet, which horror movies inspire you the most and why? Movies inspire you Yeah, what most. inspire you? What makes you want to go out and kill someone? Well, you know, I got to think about that. That's okay. interesting. That's pretty huh. easy for me. Oh, really? Um, no, I'm just kidding. Okay. I don't kill people. I'm about to say. I got some problems. Um, I, for me, biggest inspiration horror films, uh, Halloween is definitely a big one. If Yeah. If like I want to get into a mood where I'm um, and I want to start jotting some ideas for a short or anything like that, Halloween and Misery. Misery is a big one. Uh, a lot of times when I used to write, like in high school and stuff, I would put Misery on in the background. And I think it's just a whole meta process that, you know, he's a writer and he's got to write this story for mm-hmm. her. It just really gets me in the mood to write. Uh, so those are two. Blair Witch Project is another one, too. I just think that's just a that's great one. That's one of mine. It's yeah. a great one. Uh, First Nightmare on Elm Street. First Nightmare on Elm Street. Great. It's a great one. It's um, a really great con- – um, actually, what uh, like watching – documentaries or, or listening to audio commentaries on these movies are really inspiring as well. Really? If you watch, there's a, there's a couple great doc- documentaries on the Nightmare on Elm Street series, but there's one I think on Netflix now. It's like a three-hour um, documentary that covers every single Nightmare film, and okay. it's just it's so fucking great, just, especially them talking about the original one and trying to kickstart it and everything. Mm-hmm. And then the audio commentary on Halloween is pretty damn great. Is too. it really? Oh, oh, yeah. A lot of natural lighting that they did and a lot of stuff really? they had to scramble up and fake to make it look all legit. Interesting. Great stuff. Great okay, stuff. Okay, cool. Uh, but yeah. those are those are good ones. So yeah. thank you for uh, that. Qu- you got another one? Or no? uh, just the first paranormal activity. I know, paranormal the state, I know the state of the franchise is kind of laughable at this point, yeah. but that first one when it came out but honestly, was which, so inspiring. Which yeah. really great movie that was a first of a franchise that spawned – That's true. Oh, I hit my mic. Jeez, I scared myself. That spawned <laughs> more and more sequels that kind of like – watered down the, the series yeah everything yeah <laughs> let's go to another question we got the next one here daniel epler says what's an older horror film that people don't normally talk about or recognize but you really love and think we should give a chance love the show guys and you should have jt on the show because jt is every man's hero yeah he's not really he's got his own podcast yeah okay? let him do his own all right thing. anyway just kidding we'll have jt on. older i think J- having jt on for the director's one would be fun maybe we'll have yeah. him on next week okay we'll okay get him on. um Let's see. Uh, older horror films. Older horror films that people don't talk about a lot. Um, I don't necessarily know about older ones. Like, uh, how old we? How old do you think we're going? Like, I mean, he's probably wants like eighties. He probably wants like eighties, seventies. Yeah. Um, that is. Can't a, think of uh, I can't think of the top. We probably should have read these questions before. Yeah. Um, I mean, you know, a lot of people do. I mean, most. What I will say. A lot of people always talk about The Shining. A lot of people always talk about The Thing, The Exorcist. Uh, a lot of people don't talk about Rosemary's Baby too much. They don't. No, I think that's one that kind of gets – I mean, it's a great horror film, but mm-hmm. it just um, – not done too many people too. I, I think, think people more talk about The Omen when they I was about that. to bring that up too. Mm-hmm. I think people need to talk about that one more. Um, Amityville Horror, a lot of people don't talk about too. I mean, yeah. I know – The remake? No. <laughs> oh, gosh. Um I, I yeah, yeah, I don't, I don't see too many – Josh Brolin's yeah. incredible beard. I don't think people talk about that one too mm-hmm. much. Um. Yeah, that's that's hard to think about because yeah, I can't even think so of one. Many. Yeah. Great um, question. They had us. Great stumped. question. You got me stumped. Yeah. Uh, oh wow, this one's a long one, but this is good old Scotty B. Scotty. Scotty B just says wanted to say first off, so cool that y'all read my story. Oh, this is the I think yeah, this is the, Hell's, the Hell's Gate, Gate guy. Yeah. yeah. Uh, y'all are welcome to come visit anytime. Oh, what a, what a classic I'll, text. And I'll take y'all. y'all welcome. I'll take y'all out. This to guy's Hell's awesome. Gate. Okay. I'll drink some beer. Oh yeah. At Hell's Gate. Fuck. That sounds like a 
blast. This guy's awesome. My question is, what do y'all think? He, he keep bringing up the y'all, man. I love it. What do y'all think are some of the most important and influential horror movies of the 21st century? There was kind of a, a lull in horror movies in the late 80s, early 90s. Then Scream really he- helped redefine the slasher movie, and it set a domino effect. I know you. I know what you did last summer, Urban Legend, etc. People don't talk about Urban Legend a lot. That's not too bad. Jared yeah. Leto. Um, but then it kind of went to crap again after that for a while. So from around 2001 to the present, what are some of the most influential horror movies that really helped bring horror back to life and give something new and terrifying to enjoy? For me, one that really stands out is The Strangers. It was yeah. the first movie in a long time that actually freaked me out. Even today, I still get chills thinking about it. Since then, um, there have been more invasion movies, and it wasn't the first, but it definitely is embedded in my mind. Um Thank you. Thank you for the question, Scotty. Mm-hmm. Great one. Definitely. Uh, definitely, I think Strangers is a great one. I actually didn't like the movie at first, mm-hmm. and then going back on it, I really appreciated the hell out of it. Um, yeah, let's see. Like, kind of like, I guess, jump-started and, 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 and revitalized horror in, in certain ways. Um, Cabin in the Woods, we mentioned earlier, I think is one mm-hmm. um, that really stand that stood the test of time for yeah. that. Yeah. Um, shit. I'll say, I know I just said it two seconds ago, but the first parental activity first reinvigorated parental the found footage genre. Yeah. Again, I mean, whether that's a good thing or not, mm-hmm. you know, you'd be the judge, but yeah. that was a very important one. The first saw, the first saw, started the torture porn genre. Y- yeah. And, uh, and again, whether you like well. that or not. Yeah. But those are some off the top of my head right there. The Scream's f- a great one as well, obviously. That wasn't like 21st a- century, though. It oh, that's 20th. right. That's he right. Wants, that's he true. wants 2000s and beyond. Example. Yeah. 2000 and beyond. Mm-hmm. Um,. Strangers. The first movie. Texas Chainsaw Massacre remake, just because it started that's, all that's the, remake the remakes. Trends. Well, yeah. Oh, did, did it? Okay. Well, wait. wait that was two thousand. That was that was oh three. Was there any other remakes a couple years before, before that? that. Um, I know there's the haunting, and that was like the nineties. Oh though. my goodness, no. I mean, because there's oh yeah, there's always been remakes. Yeah, but I think that I was th- the I more think you're contemporary right, one. That was it, the first contemporary one. It was like say. Bay Michael Bay produced yeah. like every mm-hmm. main horror. Um, remake out there and yeah i think texas chainsaw was one of them like that did it right first of all and then um yeah then it spawned all these other remakes um influential though uh, strangers is probably up there um honestly i i really hope that babadook and it follows are two examples Mm -hmm. really uh, you know what it okay um i'll say that i don't i don't necessarily know if babadook is the one that will do this um, there might have been a one before this, but indie horror films, I think, mm-hmm. are, are what's going to be next because good. it's good for me yeah. to, because, you know, smaller budgets means uh, it, it could be more passion into yeah. it and they, uh, they put a lot more work and effort into it. And so that's what I'm hoping for. I'm hoping the indie horror films are the ones that <laughs> – Get some more spotlight, but that's kind of contradicting because it's an indie film. Like, like I don't. As long as it's made with an indie mindset, and yeah. It wasn't ordered by a studio. But it's also an interesting. I'm con- happy. It's an interesting conversation. I mean, and we had this with Alicia Malone when we talked about indie mil- movies. Is that it starts off as an indie movie, and then there's a lot, a lot of buzz around it, and then it gets picked up, and then it. it, it Turns branches into a out. It branches out. No, not just that, but it branches out to more theaters and more people are able to see it, which is great that more people are able to see it. But then it, it doesn't necessarily make it an indie film that much anymore That's because true. of the wide release. Yeah. So um, I'm hoping that indie films like will will influence more directors out there to say, hey, I don't need a huge budget to make this movie, but that doesn't mean I need to make it crap because we all know like Unfriended was a very low budget horror movie. And they can get away with doing a lot of pretty easy stuff, like filming it in one day. You know, mm-hmm. I wish they would take that and 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 just cherish it and make something really good out of it. Yeah. So, thank Preach. you. Uh, thank you, Tyler. Preach. Thank you. Uh, Next one, Tyler. I'm sorry, Scotty. He actually had a second question, real quick. Um, okay. Who's your favorite horror villain? For me, I know Freddy. the Freddy Krueger. Yeah, for me. Sorry, um, I didn't. Well, he puts Michael Myers, which is a great one. Yeah. Um, favorite horror villain? Yeah, Freddy is probably up there. Mm-hmm. Um, I'd say yeah. I'd have to go Freddy as well. Mm -hmm. Just because he's just like the complete package. Mm -hmm. All right, cool. Next one, Igor Urbanski. Yeah, Yeah, we know this guy. He says, my name's Igor Urbanski. Yes, you are. I have been a fan of your show since the first episode. Keep up with a great job. Thanks, dude. Thank you, dude. You are awesome, guys. Thanks for reading my Facebook comments on the last two episodes. No problem. I have a couple questions. I'm a huge fan of John Carpenter's movies. By any chance, do you think you can do a show dedicated to his work or any other director? Hell yes, Absolutely. dude. Absolutely. And uh, what's your favorite Carpenter movie? And last question, outside of movies but related to horror, what are your favorite horror Ooh, video games? Ooh, that's a great one. Okay, we'll get into that. First in one, what's your favorite John Carpenter movie? John, obviously, it's The Thing. thing? Um, yeah, I mean, I, I Just could, to I, pick one different for years, I'll go Halloween. Yeah, like, I mean, yeah. Halloween's great, too. Uh, I... I mean, I think Halloween's a better made movie, but the thing is just by far mm-hmm. my favorite. Uh, I mean, John Carpenter is the man when it comes to, to horror films. Mm-hmm. Um, 
Uh, I also I, I don't think the fog's too bad either. Um, they Live is really underrated in my book. If there's one movie out there that people, I that. I, it's not necessarily a horror film. It's not, but um, but yeah. definitely. Uh, and uh, too bad he hasn't really done much of anything. I mean, come back, John. Uh, Ghost of Mars was his last movie, and Ugh. for what it's worth, it's a fun guilty pleasure. But it's not all right. Great, yeah. it really isn't. Um, as far as horror video games, oh my god, gotta go. We, Silent Hill. Silent Hill, yeah. For yeah. me, it's Resident Evil. Yeah, uh, Resident Evil for me was the one. Um, mm-hmm. uh, as far as like some old school stuff, because I I love survival horror. I think that's just the perfect genre for a video game. Not mm-hmm. for everybody, for sure. Because I I know of like people like when I I used to play Resident Evil and people would watch me. They think this is fucking boring trying to yeah. find a key that's on the other side of a room or something like that. Mm-hmm. Um, but for me, I think that's just there's nothing more terrifying than running low on ammunition and not being able to kill something. I know. Also, I know this one's uh, relatively new and it's um super indie. But the first Slender game. Yeah, the first Slender game. So is it's great. so basic, but I remember just spending so much time just yeah. hanging out with friends, like seeing how far you can get and mm-hmm. just getting the shit scared. I throw someone some headphones and play that yeah. game. It's the so it's it's really fun to play with everyone. Um, another recent one that I've been uh, that I've loved was Dead Space. Mm. I don't know if you ever played Dead Space. Uh, once or twice. It's honestly the best um, Alien video game, like Alien, like the series Alien, because uh, I you know like uh, the xenomorphs and stuff. Because they're not actually xenomorphs in the in the game, mm-hmm. but of all the Alien franchise games that have tried to work they've never worked like colonial marines or anything yeah, like that not. or even isolation i heard it was you didn't like ice- I, I, I never played it. i heard it wasn't okay. that great yeah it's good at times but, but it's honestly the best representation of that because mm-hmm. especially the first one just very small game you just you're in a small crew you, you you invade a ship um and you just find out that everyone's getting fucking murdered nice. and it's just awesome it's really cool and the design of the the necrom the necromorphs was the the creatures and those are really cool and fucking creepy all right very good creepy. One. great question okay hey uh this one come oh my goodness you should have helped me pronounce this one <laughs> oh this is uh brady okay brady and 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 first off Love the show and the idea of a QA and a episode. Thank you. My question is, if you're asked to create a perfect horror movie, oh, what dude. is your plot? I'm not asking for a line-by-line line script, but what are your necessities and what are you definitely leaving out? I love asking the question because it always gets me so many, gets so many responses. Thank you, Brady, uh, for that question. Um, for me, obviously, um, I, it would be a two-hour-long horror film. Yeah, be, mine too. Uh, it would be a slow buildup. Not too much would really happen in the very beginning. You would, I would establish the characters, get to know them, have you care for them, and then subtly hint at some creepy things here and there. Yeah, and then eventually, you know, the the crux, the the middle uh, towards the end is where just shit hits the fan and gets mm-hmm. starts getting really scary. Because for me, the most important things in horror films are the characters, and I just a lot of horror films they don't focus on that. Mm-hmm. Uh, also, right, I'm right there with you. It's the exact same thing for me. Except for the end, what I see a lot of horror movies do is that they'll be scary about midway, but in the last act is normally like an action movie. You know what it, I mean? Yeah, it's very true. I want yes. it to get even scarier even as it scarier. gets going, like towards the end. I love that idea. That'd be a perfect. Let's fucking do let's that. Let's do this. Let's, let's do, do that. Script? We're going to do, do, do that. We're going to do that. We're going to do that for you guys. Um, so, yeah, and the ending would just end. Yeah. It would be whether no it's sequels. No sequels, no. nothing. Just completely mm-hmm. standalone on its own. I mean, I'm sure we can come up with cool ideas for like a series. And mm-hmm. if it was a series, it'd be a trilogy. That's it. Mm-hmm. Nothing else. It wouldn't spawn from anything else because you got to, with horror films and, you know, obviously movies in general, you got to cherish what you have right then and there. You don't want to overdo it. You overdo it, you get eight films and nobody cares by the eighth movie. Yeah. So. That's um that's our point on that and uh, fuck man we're gonna we're gonna, we're gonna do, do it this. man we're gonna we're do gonna it. do this all okay. right next question is from Billy Storo says my favorite era of horror films are the eighties the thing Nightmare on Elm Street etc love the care that goes into practical effects even if they are cheesy and a little unsurreal so my question is which are your guys' favorite movies from which era um no 80s I, is a great I, one I, I think that's 80s considered is perfect. the best genre I, I, or the best era yeah I think so too uh seven seven mid seventies the late seventies I think mm-hmm. as well. Uh, but definitely 80s, I think, was the prime of horror films cause, yeah. because of the practical effects. It seems sure. like that's when they tried the hardest. Yeah, no. <laughs> exactly. Now it's just it's nothing. Yeah. Um, let's see. Jesus, man. There's so many of these. Yeah, we got to get through these. Okay. Um, okay. Uh, this one. Jeez. Uh, this is the, the long last name. Uh, this is uh, Jarrett Deyo Dist 
Deset Desata Tay Jacobs. Wow, I butchered that. Hey guys, I love the podcast. You help me get through the bad days and make the good days better. Thanks, Thanks, man. man. I appreciate that. Um, He's got a few questions, but we'll answer one. What's your favorite guilty pleasure slash movie from the big three? A uh, via. Uh, I mean, I mean, by that I mean the Friday the Thirteenth, Nightmare on Elm Street, and Halloween. Of Guilty the, pleasure. Hmm. Like, like, I think they're all good. Oh, you mean like, oh, like from of the entire the series, franchise? Yeah. Like, which okay. is your favorite? I mean, obviously for me, I talked about this last week. Uh, Jason Takes Manhattan. Okay. Uh, I think that's one of my favorites just because it's so fun. And Jason X too. That's I think really Halloween fun. Resurrection's a lot of fun. Halloween Resurrection. Yeah. Trick or treat, Trick or treat <laughs> motherfucker. <laughs> it's just so funny. So uh. funny. Um, cause, cause of, of those series, Friday the 13th and Nightmare on Elm Street, they're the ones that don't take it as serious. Well, mm-hmm. Friday the 13th does take it serious, but it turns out to be really corny and cheesy. Whereas, um, Nightmare on Elm Street series is a little bit more aware. And then Halloween is generally really serious throughout the whole series. So mm-hmm. I definitely take that one. Um, let's go on the next one. Nick Rutten. Nick Rutten says best horror movie heroin to Ooh. clarify. I mean, heroin, the sense that she doesn't just run and scream until she dies and tries to turn it around. Ooh. Uh, Sydney Prescott. Sydney Prescott? Yeah, that's for me. Uh, yeah. I'll go Ellen Ripley. Oh, Ellen Ripley. That's a good yeah, I think one, yeah. that's like the ultimate, ultimate mm-hmm. badass. Uh, I think that's just the ultimate female character. Yeah. Uh, for sure. Uh, let's go Sigurd Stranda. What is your favorite surprise horror films? By that, surprise. I mean movies not marketed as or not appearing as horror movies that turned out to be. Oh. Hmm. Not turn out to be. I mean – if, you, if, if, you, if we want to talk about a movie marketed a completely different way, Cabin in the Woods was one that yeah. I saw the trailers That's and I was like, this one. looks fucking stupid. And then when I saw the movie, I was like, whoa, this is completely different. Um, a more recent one, It Follows, was marketed as like the scariest fucking movie of all time. Yeah. It was great. It was a great movie. But it's movie. not the scariest movie of all time. It's a completely different thing. It's just an insanely creepy movie. Yeah. You know I mean, that was a surprise where it wasn't what I was expecting, but I still love the movie a lot. Mm, yeah. Gotcha. Um, all right, let's 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 go to some of the Facebook questions. Facebook questions. Because we have a lot of Facebook questions as well. Some simple ones. Uh, let's see. Ooh, who's the best modern-day Scream Queen from 2000 to now? And that comes from Tyler Myers. Scream Queen. Yeah. Are there any modern ones um, that are in, like, a lot of horror movies? Hmm. Well, we got to think franchise-wise. It's mm-hmm. like, if you think, uh, not even Saw. Um, let's see. Yeah, it's hard to paranormal. Yeah, I was <laughs> no, thinking that. I was thinking that series. too. I mean, if you think of it, uh, of a franchise, Scream Queen. I'm sure it's like people are gonna be like, "Oh, get this one, this one." My, Gosh, uh, I was gonna say Micah Monroe, but the guest isn't. She really a could horror. be. I think you she's think so? close to becoming that because okay. of it, the guest, and it yeah. follows. Okay. Um, if she's in more, she movies. does a couple more. Yeah. She is so beautiful. She's God damn it! I hate. I hate that she's <laughs> so beautiful. Um, this one, the next one comes from Hayden uh, Claborn. What was your first film you snuck into? Hills Have Eyes. Oh, okay, I cool. Think, I think that was the um, one. First, like, horror movie I snuck into. Yeah. I think, for me, I, I never really snuck into movies just because I always felt really guilty about it. I yeah. always wanted to support it and, and all that. Um, but I do remember when The Omen came out. It was rated R, came out in 666, mm-hmm. and me and my, a bunch of my friends wanted to see it. Um, 2006, yeah, so I was in eighth grade and I had a goatee. I was, like, the only... Dude, I know, facial hair, okay? I know. I was such a douche oh back, too. Oh, my God. I was such a douche. But, um... Yeah, uh, uh, I got I got all my friends' tickets to go in to, to get into the movie. Really, they just believed that. Yeah, you were, they thought oh, I, I, awesome. I got I bought like four tickets. We all got in. We were super excited. We got past the ticket booth. We got past the guy taking the tickets. How? But then we ran into the security guard yeah. outside the door. He's like, "Let me check your IDs." We had to go yeah. back out and get our money back and then go home. Yeah. So I never got in to see that. <laughs> okay, that's a fun story though. Yeah. Um, Adam. Um, Cho- I I always want to know how to pronounce it. Choeti. Chuetti, Adam Chuetti. What are the, what? This comes from Facebook too. Are there any horror crossovers you haven't seen but would like to? Horror crossovers. I really, uh, I remember the for one of the original ideas for the ending of Friday of uh, Freddy versus Jason was that uh, Hellraiser was going to show up towards mm-hmm. the end and like as the two were fighting like they were going to be dragged into hell or something like that and then mm-hmm. he'd be like pulling them on chain chain a string kind of like hey stop it mm-hmm. you know or whatever something like that i think yeah. hellraiser um interacting with them um i think mm. uh let's see it's tough yeah because freddie versus jason is like a perfect a perfect blend. Blend. they're two completely you, different you can't personalities see, you can't see michael myers in that no like imagine michael myers versus jason Voorhees. it's just them it's just or, a, no like, talking not, at all it's, sh- sh- it's just sh- yeah. and then just head tilting that's it <laughs> That's all. It'd actually be. be a fun little short, you know, yeah. a little clip. Kind of funny. I would, I, I would like to see like a little short like that where it's the three of them interacting. Yeah. And Freddy's just like, you guys never talk. <laughs> <laughs> That's right. That'd be kind of fun. That'd be kind of fun. Video. Um, 
Yeah, I can't think of any more. I don't know. That's uh, a tough one. Okay. Hmm. Uh, let's go. Let's go another Facebook. Let's go another Facebook. What are your guys' favorite animated horror movie? Hmm. Animated horror. There is a. There was actually a really. There's a couple. There's pr- some pretty cool Dead Space um, animated movies. Mm-hmm. Uh, Dead Space Downfall is fucking violent as hell. Okay. Um, I think that that's one that comes to mind. That's where I, I just want to talk about that one. I can't. This isn't a horror movie, but Akira just gets scary as fuck at sometimes. Oh, is it? Yeah. Um, is it that like anime? Yeah. Mm, Akira okay. anime. Yeah, um, not too many. I can't think of too many. I can't. Horror oh, like cartoons. we're not qualified for this. Um, I would say Courage the Cowardly Dog is oh, terrifying. Yes. I Absolutely terrifying. Um, yeah, and uh, I'm trying to, was what was the other? No, that wasn't too scary. Mm-hmm. Um, but yeah, that's a good one. You got to yeah. think about animated horror films. Um, there were some go. animated shorts that were released with I Am Legend. They're actually really good, by the way. Hmm. They're actually some of them are really creepy. Okay. Um, sorry. Go on. Uh, another Facebook one from Sadie. Said I always want to know how to pronounce Sadie. I think it's Sadie. Sadie. Oh, duh. Sadie Minden says, "Is there a particular director you like to see direct a horror film oh, this that has not worked with a genre?" Okay, let's do one right now. Um, Nolan is an obvious one. Yeah, Nolan's too obvious. Um, uh, ba ba ba. Um, I can see. Uh. I would like Duncan Jones would be cool. Duncan Jones would be really cool. Yeah. I would like to see him do a horror sci-fi. Mm-hmm. Um, Neil Blomkamp, but he's doing Aliens. Yeah, so that'd be interesting. Yeah. Neil Blomkamp would be a really great one. Huh. Um, uh, I think the ultimate one for me is obviously it's just Nolan. I, yeah. I want to see him do a horror film so bad. Uh-huh. I think he can, because even in like Batman Begins, the whole thing with fear has got some creepy stuff in yeah. there that I think would be really cool. So thank you for that question. Mm-hmm. Um, let's go one more and then we'll jump back right back into the, um, the, the Gmail the questions. Email. Um, and then we'll do a few of those and then we'll tell a scary story and then we'll get out of here. Okay. Um, let's see. Real quick from Twitter. George McCann said, what's your favorite horror movie? Stoner. He says, oh, Cabin in the Woods. Oh yeah. I'm right there with him. Yeah. That, that's, that's perfect. That's a funny That's the one. perfect Stoner? Oh man. That's a great one. Stoners. There's a lot of fucking stoners in horror films. There's a lot. Um. Oh, Shorty from Scary Movie. Oh, no. yeah. I think that's good. Oh shit, son! Oh shit! Shot me in the lug. You want to take a hit of this? <laughs> Smoke's all coming out of his lung. Was, I love the part. I love it when he's like, "Yo, mama." <laughs> he's like, "Just yo, mama too, stupid." Oh, well, that's right. Um, I think he's pretty funny. You got some more Twitter ones? Uh, yeah, I got a you couple. Get some here. Cool up in Twitter ones. And then um. We'll Kevin Dean says, uh, as big horror fans, how do you guys like to celebrate Halloween? Oh, um, I, what I try to do, and I did this barely, I almost did this one year, but, um, for the past few years, I'll watch a horror, mil- horror movie every single night, um, during, oh, really? during October. Um, That'd be cool. I'm gonna it's, it's a lot of fun. Yeah. It's just cause I'll either, I, if it's something that I have or if it's on TV, cause it's mm-hmm. just the, the mood. And then obviously, um, AMC has like a, a 13 nights of horror um that is just a lot of fun mm-hmm. that that uh, thanks to amc is one of the reasons why i'm a big horror fan because of all the different horror films that they would play during october because mm-hmm. halloween is my absolute favorite holiday and uh, i love just this the fall season and and it being cold and being mm-hmm. creeped out as far as halloween night like i don't i don't, I don't really... dress up you don't? No. I do if I go to like a party. That's about it. I see. I've um, never even actually been to a Halloween, Halloween party? party before, so cool maybe sometimes. I'll get drunk Depends on who this you year go. and do go. Yeah. Um. Yeah. As far as the day, that's what I'll usually do, or I'll just hang out, giving out candy. Just I don't really do too much the yeah. actual day, but the, about the weekend of or the week before, I'll usually go to a you know like a not scary farm or Universal. Horror yeah, Nights, Universal. I like going something to like that. Um. I'll I'll generally at least watch a couple movies around that time. Yeah, I'll probably. Yeah. End end up staying home by myself and watching a scary movie unfortunately no, we're gonna go party okay yeah. we're gonna take you to first halloween party it's gonna be fun got another right. one up there uh gian luca marzano says worst horror film ever ever <sighs> ever i'm trying to think what do i really fucking hate ever you got any at top no i can't think of any i really hate the halloween remake I really hate that one, but I would hate the second one more than I do. Yeah, the first but one. I wouldn't say it's the worst. Um, I think House of Wax is a piece of shit. Too. <sighs> yeah. Um, God damn it! What pissed me off? What ho- the Friday the Thirteenth remake was really bad. The Devil Inside. Mm. The Devil Inside. Yeah. It, 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 at least a, a more recent one. Yeah. That is a travesty. I, I don't understand how that movie was made. Mm-hmm. Uh, let's go. I'm gonna jump back into uh, a Gmail question. It says. 
from Brian Fernandez. He's a great fan. Who, which by the way, we hit 500 likes on Facebook. Thanks to Brian. Thanks to him, basically. He was like promoting been, on Schmoville. So yeah. thank you, Brian. You appreciate. It. You know what, dude? I'm gonna send you the Blu-ray for that. You've yeah. been really awesome. Because I was gonna send a Blu-ray to a, a lucky fan for sending us one of these questions. Look, he sent us a question, and he's also been hooking us up yeah. with Thanks, some Brian. of these likes, man. So. I don't know what Blu-ray you're going to get yet. Yeah, you're going to get one. But send me your information. I'll get you a good horror film. Um, we Dolphin Tail 2. No, it's going to be a good horror movie, okay. trust me. And I'll send it your way, man. So thank you for that. And his question is, why, hello, gentlemen. I have but one question for you both to answer uh, in any way you can. Both of you said the remakes, if done well, could be movies. Um, wait, wait. Could be good movies. I'm sorry. Since the Friday the 13th is no longer going to be found footage type, what kind of direction could the movie go? Love the show, guys. Keep up the kick-ass work and keep on scaring Cody more, Copster. Hey. Hashtag Horflix fan for life. Yes, get for that life. trending. Get that trending. Um, as far as, like, it's really easy to do a Friday the 13th movie. You get a group of kids, you put them in the woods, and you mm -hmm. have them get killed off one by one. There's yeah. really, I mean, found footage would have been different, obviously, and that's fine, but it it really wouldn't work for the character of Jason Voorhees because a lot of the movies, it's like from his perspective, unless they scientifically put a camera in his eye and he was following everyone, which just really wouldn't make sense. Um, but I would just rather like to go back to that form of just fun, just asshole kids mm -hmm. getting killed off one by one. That's how I, I just want to see it. Yeah. Get it to the spirit of the original, you know, yeah. don't make it like the, the remake was, it was just, it was, I can't explain it. It was they, just too. They just changed up the character too much. Yeah. Jason like Jason Voorhees wouldn't kidnap a girl just because yeah. it looked like the mom. I just, I, I, I never saw it that way. And uh -huh. I, I would just like to see, I don't know. He's, he's gone to space. Have him go underwater. <laughs> I don't like it. Fight an octopus. Yeah. yeah. Fighting an octopus. I that's honestly what I want. would not mind that. Yeah. Um. So I think that's going to about wrap it up. We didn't get to everyone's Q and A's, but there were a lot. I think what we're going to do is every 10 episodes we're going to do q a stuff yeah. so i think that could be a lot of fun so mm -hmm. don't worry i'm sure a lot of people your questions will be answered at least next time and uh you know next maybe, time on Overflow. yes and who knows maybe in the future we'll have just more q a segments just to it's do fun. i think so yeah um so you want to do a bedtime story let's do a bedtime story let's do a bedtime story um let's see here this is a very long one but i'm gonna read it my, my gone. what I couldn't find him. What'd you say, boy? I couldn't find the story. Boy, go get me a bear. I'm going to slap my sister and sleep with my cousin. Hey, now. Okay. <laughs> this one comes from Amber Bettis. Bettis? Bettis. Amber Bettis. Amber. Amber. Bef uh, let's see. Okay, here we go. This is a very long one, guys, so work with me here. All right? <clears throat> Let me set up the mood. <clears throat> <laughs> That's pretty good. Um, but Amber says, Before I tell my story, I have to say that my mother doesn't lie. Ever. If she said it was suddenly raining cocks, you better grab an umbrella and, said and, story. and don't catch the raindrops on your tongue. <laughs> so I, I good believe her. Good God, Amber. Okay. <laughs> uh, 100%. Okay. Here's the story. My mom grew up in Florida, and she also grew up relatively poor. As a result, she walked everywhere or hitched. She was walking to the store one day alone, and a guy stopped her and asked her if she would if she would like a ride. She considered for a moment, very close to getting in. It was summer. There was a car seat in the back, and the guy was handsome. And then her cousin pulled up behind the stopped car. My mother found out later, after the arrests, that she had almost been abducted by Ted Bundy. What? what? No. Okay. Okay. Hold on. Wait. Keep, wait. It, it, wait. It keeps Amber. Going. Okay. Sorry. Go on. Go on. This keeps going. Okay. She said, I knew it was him because eyes like that stay with you. She also said he felt safe. He seemed like a nice guy, just wanting to help out, but his eyes were almost blank. I was sweating like a virgin at, pris at a prison rodeo. I love these analogies Jesus. by Amber today. Though, okay. So I would have gotten into the car with Hitler if he offered. Oh, wow. Okay. Um. Wow. How can we prove that? That was. That's really. I don't want to say that is awesome. <laughs> but I, I, I can I can somewhat relate because my mom had a run in with Richard Ramirez, who was yeah. also an infamous, infamous serial killer. Yeah, yeah. Um, that is incredibly terrifying. Wow. For those of you who don't know, Ted Bundy was a prolific serial killer who would kill a lot of women. And uh, not only that, he had been arrested two. He, he'd been put in jail, I think, like twice um, while awaiting trial and escaped twice. Mm -hmm. And in one of those times, he went to a sorority house and he ended up killing um, a bunch of sorority girls um, after escaping, uh, you know, jail. And yeah. 
um, he was, and very much so, the description she gave, that is very much his profile. He was a very charming dude. I think he even represented himself while, while in trial. Um, he was very charming. He knew how to talk to people in general. He knew how to sway women, and he, he just manipulated them to the core. Wow. And it's just, that is just terrifying. Ooh. Oh, my goodness. Wow. Um, wow. Uh, Ted Bundy is, wow. How do you top that? I don't know. Good luck next week. Jesus. <laughs> um, thank you so much, Amber. I mean, I, I'm glad that your mom uh, is, okay. That is okay and everything. Yeah. Um, but I know the feeling, not real, not of her, but I know of the feeling of finding out a story like that from your mom. Mm-hmm. Not cool. Um, so thank you for that story. I'm not going to sleep tonight. Yeah. I'm going to lock all my doors, um, and I have that creepy image in my head. So Ooh. that's going to wrap it up for us, guys, on Horror Flicks. I hope you enjoyed that story. I hope you enjoyed this episode in yeah. general. And uh, we're Thanks. excited to be talking about more horror films Thanks for this listening, summer. guys. Thank man. you guys so thank much. Thank you for submitting questions and continuing to give us stuff to talk about. Yeah, thank exactly. You. We love the tweets. We love the reactions from you guys. It's a lot of fun. And uh, you guys keep us. You guys are the reason why we keep going and doing all this shit. Mm-hmm. All this shit. Hey, smell my fingers? Oh. Um, ooh, fish. Right on. Oh my goodness. <laughs> You're on fire today. Um, so, yeah, uh, be sure to like us on Facebook. Get us to 750 likes, as Brian Fernandez would say. He's our um, Facebook associate. Damn That's right. right. Uh, we're at 500 right now. Thank you guys again for doing that. Be sure to subscribe to the Schmoes No Podcast channel um, if you're listening to that on there. I apologize if I'm lazy. I'm not putting up pictures. I've been busy these past few weeks. Hopefully that'll be up next week. Otherwise, you're just seeing one picture the whole time. But that's all right. You just want to listen to it. Anywho. Um, and then also uh, tell them about the iTunes stuff. Yeah. Uh, rate and review on iTunes if you haven't already. Get us up those charts. Uh, we peak, Our peak number is still 11. We want to be able to get up that, you know, see if we can. So keep giving us some help. Thank keep you. on keeping it. Keep on keeping it. Do all that stuff. Support us. Tweet at us. Hashtag at Horflix. Share it with your friends. Share it with your families. Maybe not your mom or your dad because we curse too much. But that's Fuck okay. Yeah. Fucking A. Fucking cursing men. Spitting Fuck beer. Yeah. That's yeah. right. Spit in my face, Cody. I'm not going to spit in your face. Oh, okay. All right. I'm not that rude of a person. Bitch. All right, fuck you. Is that an octopus or an octopussy? That's not funny, man. You oh, fucking oh, pussy. You. Oh. you son of a bitch. Fuck you. Get out of here. No, get it. Get Get I'm Cody. Going. I'm going. I'm get going. Get out of here. I'm going. Go. Get. Get. I'm going. Skinny son of a bitch. Eat a sandwich. Fuck you. All right, see you next week. <laughs>